Eric Ten Hag made it clear that he was using these two weeks away from football with the international break to do some planning at the club. Take a look at training. Take a look at structures inside and outside of the club. And also to take a look towards the upcoming transfer windows, January and the summer. This is what he said after the game against Sherry. He said, look, we're going to be looking towards the window in January or next summer already. Now, you might be hearing John Murto say something completely opposite in his investors call saying, look, we're, we're ahead of schedule in our recruitment plans. No, hold up. You panicked and you borrowed money. And I'm going to do a separate video on that. I'll tell you that. And you made a load of signings towards the end of the window. And, you know, I may well not be planning as a club to spend in the January transfer, but I think we should be. And I think Ten Hag will be pushing for it. So in this video, I'm going to run through a list of five strikers who I think United could and should be looking at in the upcoming January transfer window. Because I think if we're going to make one signing, it should be a striker in January. You can let me know what strikers you think we should be looking at. But I'm going to take a look at the tactics board, run through, add these players in, and we can have a discussion throughout this video. So you can let me know what you think in the comments below. But the first name on this list was a name that was on the list during the summer, and I think his stock has only continued to rise since then. And that's Ivan Tony, Brentford striker. Look, when strikers sometimes make the transition from the Championship to the Premier League, they don't do very well. Ivan Tony has only continued to grow and grow and grow, and I think there's a genuine opportunity and chance for him to get into that squad for the World Cup. Now, he is a out-and-out -out centre forward. Now, I don't particularly need to show you his stats to sort of... These stats are, I probably won't look at the stats too much here because the stats, are certainly for some of the younger players, they don't really paint the picture of what that individual is. Now, Ivan Tony, if you look at his heat map here from the Premier League this season, he's kind of hugging to the left a little bit more. Ivan Tony is an extremely mobile centre forward. And I think he's only getting better and better and better. Uh, and I think at some point he's going to be making a move to a top level Premier League club, a top six club. It's just, I like his attitude, I like his approach, I like how he's rounded his game, and I like, I think he would suit the Ten Hag system very, very well. So Ivan Tony is the first name on this list. I want to quickly run through the next four. Before I do, watch this. So there might not be any football for the next couple of weeks, but I'll tell you what, it gives you the perfect opportunity to play Top 11. I'm sure you may have heard about Top 11 before, but if you haven't, let me introduce you. Top 11 is a free-to-play football management mobile game. You're in charge of quite literally every aspect of the club, from building a new stadium, to signing players, to tactics, in-game substitute. You're in charge of every single aspect. It's available on Google Play, the App Store, Huawei, absolutely everywhere. And the award-winning game has been played by over 260 million people. It's a serious, serious game. And I, I, I love this game because you can get immersed in the actual game. Some football management games, they're a little bit boring. Not this one. You can stand there. You can bring up the 3D live match. You can see your tactics, of your, your decisions being played out in front of you. And it's got that immersive aspect to it. And that's particularly why I enjoy it. And there really, I think, is something in this game for everybody. You can play with your friends around the world. You can create leagues together. You can build new, as I said, you can do every single aspect that you could possibly want to do at a football club and you're in control of it. And honestly, over the next couple of weeks, I'd encourage you, get involved. I'll leave the link in the description. Go and download Top 11. You won't regret it. Free to play, award-winning, played by over a quarter of a billion people. They must be doing something right. So you get involved and you can do your thing right. Moving straight on, let's talk about strikers maybe from around Europe because Ivan Tony is from the Premier League, right? We know that. You know that. And I said, I, I, I remember saying this, said, look, we might have missed out on Darwin Nunes, blah, blah, blah. There's going to be another Darwin Nunes next summer. And maybe it's going to be a lot closer <laughs> to Benfica than we thought it was going to be because Gonzalo Ramos, the 21-year-old, is sort of taking the league by storm this year. He's got four goals and three assists in six appearances inside the uh, Liga Portugal. And he is a striker who really is looking red hot right now. Absolutely red hot right now. You go down there, we take a look at his stats. Look at this. You're talking about a striker who fits the profile of Eric Ten Hag. Top 6th percentile for interceptions. Top 12 for tackles. But these can all be improved on. He's only 21 years old. But he is somebody who just stays in the middle. Look, he's, if we compare it to his heat map last year... He's sort of, I wouldn't say he's all over the place. Obviously, that's going to change across the course of the season. But at the start of this season, he is hugging that central position and it is paying off. I think he's going to be a name that a lot of clubs are looking at. A player who 
I imagine as the season goes on and progresses, we're going to be talking about him a little bit more. But Gonzalo Ramos definitely is one to take a look at, definitely one to put on the potential list because I can't imagine that Benfica would like to let him go in January, but his stock is only going to keep rising and rising and rising. So I definitely think he's an option that we should be considering. And another option here, I think this one's even less likely, but I think these, these are the sorts of players that we should be taking a look at. Now, Karim Adeyemi went into Borussia Dortmund this summer. I don't know whether he was directly signed as an actual replacement for Erling Haaland, but it was part of that sweeping set of deals that Borussia Dortmund did when Haaland left. Now, Adeyemi has just joined them this summer and he's come for after, I think he got like 25, what was it? It, said, it says in this article here, is it 25 goals in 39 appearances for Red Bull Salzburg before he got his move there to Borussia Dortmund. And he's somebody who, if we take a look here, he's operated mainly as a striker. And which is kind of interesting, really, when you look at him. He's at 1.8 metres tall. He's, he's got a slight figure. I mean, if you take a look at his heat map this year, it's kind of slightly really. He's only made three appearances in the Bundesliga and he's been hugging out on the right wing. But a player like this, again, these are the sorts of signings that United should be looking at making. And again, you can see the pattern here. Adiemi, he's 20. Let me go to that page over here. He's 20 years old. Gonzalo Ramos, he's 21. Ivan Tony is the more experienced of the three and he's the more proven of the three and it will come with the added money that we'd have to pay for that. Uh, Ivan Tony, I've no idea. How much do you think Ivan Tony would be? Be interested to know what you think about that in the comments because I think he would be probably more than we would be able to afford in the January transfer window, but it could, it would be an ideal signing. Any one of those three, I think, would be... Hang on, Gonzalo Lopez, I mean... For all different reasons, all of them could be interesting signings. Now, these, these names here, the last couple of names, this, this is what United should be doing, right? They should be scouting players like this. Players like Adam Hlozek. Big up to George for helping me do the research here. But Hlozek is a player who has just broken into the... I think he's playing with Bayern, Bayer Leverkusen. He's playing Champions League football this year. Again, he's only, what, 20 years old. His position isn't set. He's played on the left wing. He's played up front. He's played on the right wing. He's played as a supporting striker. He is somebody who's got versatility to his game. Again, the stats don't really tell us too much. He's somebody, well, you would, you would imagine that an attacker is going to receive a lot of progressive passes. It's kind of part and parcel of the position they play. But he is somebody who, I think, watch him in the Bundesliga this year, somebody that should be on the radar that we should be taking a look at. I think he could be an exciting, exciting prospect. And this one is the sort of, this is a bit more curve, uh, not cur curveball. Yeah, you can call it a curveball if you want. Mateus Are Arezzo, I'm going to call him Arezzo. He is somebody who is breaking through in the second tier of La Liga because Granada got relegated last year. And I imagine this is going to be a name that gets talked about more regularly. As in across the season, I think we'll be talking more about this lad. About Arezzo. I think we'll be talking more about this lad. About Hlozek. But they're two sort of... Um, I wouldn't say they're going to be players who come into Manchester United and all of a sudden, wow, our, our, our problems are solved up front. But they're just exciting prospects. So they're complete... That they're, they're, not all, they're not all massively completely different signings, but Ivan Tony is that Premier League proven, 26-year-old, established, looks five goals and two assists in seven games so far this season. Really is. Incredible return. And he's been brilliant. He was, he's brilliant against United and he always has been. He would suit the Eric Ten Hag style, the profile of him. Would really suit it. And so would Gonzalo Ramos. I think both of them in particular would suit it. One more look at these stats there and you're seeing that. We can improve all of these, but naturally if you're a hard worker, it all bears goodness, if you, call, if you want to call it that. Karim Adeyemi is an interesting one. I'm interested to see how his growth goes at Borussia Dortmund. But let's be honest, Borussia Dortmund hit quite a lot of the time. They rarely miss. And a couple of sort of like left field options and conversations is Adam Klozek and their Matthias Arezzo. But what do you think? You let me know in the comments below. Who do you think would suit this team more? We need someone to come in there and give us more options. On paper, when you're looking at it, the surest thing would probably be Ivan Tony, and he'd have to pay the premium for that. Gonzalo Ramos, I think, could be a very, very interesting one to look at. And Karim Adeyemi, I don't particularly think the Borussia Dortmund would sell, but it's a conversation that we could have. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Are there any other strikers you think we should definitely be looking at? Younger, more established, what type of striker? You let me know what you think, but make sure that player is of the profile of Eric Ten Hag. Subscribe if you're new.
But I'll be interested to know what you think about this. And just regardless of what we hear, right? What, regardless of what we see about Manchester United saying, look, we don't anticipate the same level of activity. More is needed for this football club. And if they're not going to do it, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't have the conversations because we should be. And Eric Ten Hag, no doubt, will be pushing for it because he needs it and deserves it, given how well his, his signings are settled in and how United clearly are on the right path. Got to continue backing him and we need a new striker, ideally in January.